Hello, my name is Nicholas Kerwood, and today I'm going to be discussing uh, Burkhard Keller trees. Now let's start off by asking, what is a Burkhard Keller tree? A Burkhard Keller tree, also known as a BK tree, is a type of fuzzy search. In fact, it is one of the first fuzzy searches. A fuzzy search is an interpretation of a misspelled word or a piece of fuzzy information such that we can search through a preloaded dictionary to find close matches. This fuzzy search was first proposed in 1973 by two individuals named Walter Austin Burkhard and Robert M. Keller as a way to improve time complexity for fuzzy searches. You see, the original method was that a misspelled word had to be individually compared to every word in a dictionary, which is an extreme time waster. Instead, BK Trees reorganizes its dictionaries in order to make them easier to search using what's called the Levenstein method for distancing strings. To understand the operations involved in the BK tree, we need to dive a little further into the Levenstein distance method. Levenstein distance consists of three operations that quantify a unit of distance from one word to the next. A single unit of Levenstein distance can be found through replacing a character in a string, removing a character, or adding a character. Let's look at some examples. Now here we have six strings, three on the left, three on the right, all of these comparisons right here will be uh, of one unit of Levenstein distance away from one another. Now looking at the top here, we have drill and then we have drill. Now these might be the same word, but remember that chars are case sensitive. So this uppercase D does not equal this lowercase D. This is an example of replacement. Now moving on to the second one, here we have real, and we want to turn that into eel. Now in order to do that, we need to remove this uppercase R and that's one removal, one Levenstein distance. Finally, we have car, and we want to turn that into care. Now what car is missing is the letter E right here, and that is one addition, which as we saw before is also one Levenstein distance away. All right, let's define the BK tree invariant before we continue with the uh, BK tree operations. First off, every node must only have one child that has a certain Levenstein distance away from itself. This is to prevent children from colliding with one another. Instead, if a collision were to happen, we just traverse down the already established colliding child and compare our insertion to that one. I'll explain the BK tree traversal um, more deeply as we get into the BK tree operations and the uh, operations of its node class. Oh, there we go. The BK tree, like many other uh, data structures, has an internal node class that we'll call BK node. For the BK node to be initialized, we will only need to pass in the uh, string name, and for the child map, uh, we'll just fill it out with add child as we see fit um, in the add method within the um, main BK tree class. So the method child at distance and add child will be helper node methods for our add method within the BK tree. Unlike the other two, the search method will actually carry the search operation, which will only be initialized uh, within the main BK tree class. Here is a more in-depth analysis on the child at distance and add child methods. Child at distance will take in a position or desired level machine distance and poop out the BK node that it finds at that distance. This method is really simple. We just use children's maps.get method to ask for the value corresponding to a certain key. The map object does the heavy lifting here and provides us our desired key. The add child method is equally as straightforward. Here we're going to use children's maps.put method to insert a child with a key representing the position or distance from the parent node and the BK node value that we would like to insert. We'll save the explanation uh, of the search method for last because it really is the entire purpose of the data structure. It, it incorporates all the other methods and it would be easier to retain if we explain those methods first. Now that we're moving on to our BK tree method, let's get a general overview of what will be taking place within our BK tree. First off, like most trees, we are going to save the reference to the root node within the tree in order to traverse down during our search and add methods. Our search method will take in a string node to search for and a, and a max distance that will keep track of our margin of allowed error. This will return a list of strings that fit within the, uh, that margin of error. Next is the add method, which will create a root node if the BK tree is empty. If the BK tree is not empty, we will use the string node passed in and pass that over to the private method add internal, which will recurse down the tree starting with the root as a parent node until it finds a null reference where the string can be inserted. Lastly, distance will help us convert the differences between a source and a target string into an int value of Levenstein distance. This incorporates the optional minimum class, which just returns the int minimum between three ints. So, 
For our distance method, we are going to need a special algorithm in order to keep our code neat and legible. We will create a grid that will be the length of the target string plus one by the length of the source string plus one. From there, we will create our grid uh, using these three algorithms to determine the best course of action for optimal distance generation. Deletion will be the grid square above plus one. Insertion will be the grid square to the left plus one. Substitution will be the top left diagonal square plus the cost. The cost is one or zero if the two corresponding chars in the grid are equivalent. Now why don't we look at an example uh, together so that we can uh, put the algorithm to use and maybe get a better understanding of it. Okay, so here in our example, we're going to start off with a source, drill, and a target, dill. So here we have our deletion, our insertion, and substitution costs. And at the end result, we're going to want it to be in this square right here. So here we have dill, one, two, three, four chars, and then we have drill, one, two, three, four, five chars. So let's start out with D, D. So looking at the surrounding, up, left, corner, the best option is this zero here, uh, so long as the two are, are equivalent. So these two d's are equivalent, so it's going to be di minus 1, j minus 1, plus the cost, which is zero in this case because the d equals d. So we're going to put a zero there. Now we're going to move a little bit faster, so we're going to do di so di, looking at the surrounding ones, this zero here is uh, going to be the best outcome, unless, uh, of course, d equals i, but d does not equal i, so it's going to be 1, because right here we have um, insertion. So di, and then j minus 1 plus 1. So this is going to be the optimal thing to do. Um, then we're going to move on to dl, and of course these two dls aren't going to be um, equal to each other, d never equals l. So uh, this won't be the optimal thing right here. Looking up, 3 is more than 1, so this is going to be 2. Same situation here, 2, 4, the best version is 2, so we 2 plus 1, 3. There we go. Now let's look uh, in the opposite way. So with D and R, D does not equal R, so this isn't a good choice. Let's look up, look left. Up is the best choice, so 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. Over here, we look at the surrounding area. D does not equal, um, sorry, <laughs> D does not equal I, so 2 isn't going to be the best solution. Uh, let's look at 1. Yep, that's going to be the best one, so it's going to be 2. Same situation here. Uh, we have D against L, and that's going to be 3. D against L, that's going to be 4. All right, our square is a little bit smaller, so hopefully we can move uh, through it a little faster. So here we have the second char of uh, drill, which is going to be this R right here, and then the second one of dill, which is going to be I. Now we know that R does not equal I, so this is going to be either 0 plus 1, which is 1, or 2 from either side. So the best, most optimal usage is 1. All right, and then we're going to move on. So we're going to stay at R. We're going to compare R against L twice, and let's look around. So R does not equal L. So we look left uh, at our um, insertion, and it looks like 1 is going to be the best. So 1 plus 1 over here is going to be 2. We're going to have a similar situation here. R still does not equal L, so it's going to be 3. Now let's look at it from the other side. Uh, I and I. I actually does equal I, so if we look up here, 1. So it's going to be DI minus 1, J minus 1 plus cost, which is going to be zero in this case, so it's going to be one. So we continue on with, um, yeah, this way. So I compared against L, uh, I does not equal L, so we look left, and one is less than two, so that's gonna be two. Same situation, three. Now we're gonna look at it on the other side. I compare I to, to um, L, and I does not equal L, so we're going to look left, up, 1 is less than 3, so that's going to be 2, same situation, look up, look left, uh, 2 is less than 4, so it's going to be 3, now we have a smaller box, so we have L and L, L does equal L, 
So that's going to be 1 as well. Now we move on. L still equals L. So that's either going to be 2 or 2. So this is going to be 2. This is the same situation, 2. And then finally, this last L compared against this last L. L does equal L, so it's 1. So there we go. Uh, it looks like our Levenstein distance from drill to dill is 1. And as you can see, it's just um, a substitution of R to be substituted with nothing at all. So um, it, it is correct. There we go. Okay, now that we understand how to implement the distance algorithms, let's take a look at the add method. Add will accept a string and use add internal to recurse down the tree to find a null spot. While we recurse down, we need to follow the children that have the same distance from the parent as our insertion node. If we traverse the tree and find that this node already exists within the tree, do nothing, just return. All right, let's try an example. So right here we have building blocks to build our very own tree. So we're gonna add them in order from left to right. Our root node is drill. So let's start off with dill. Now let me grab dill right here. Now as we see, dill is one away from drill. We just remove this R and we have dill. So we're gonna put dill in the one slot for drill. Now next we have krill. Now krill presents an issue because we don't want a collision. Krill is one away from drill, just like dill. So what we would have to do is we'd have to replace this D with this K. Now we can't have two nodes in the one's position, so instead we recurse down to dill. And then we compare, we compare krill to dill. So krill is two away from dill. We remove the D and actually we, uh, we replace the D with an R and we add a K. So this is two away from dill. Now our next one is fill. Fill is two away from drill. You see, we just remove the D and replace the R with the F. So there we go, it's two away. And then similar to the other side, ill also wants to fill a position that a child already fills. So ill is two away from drill, but it is one away from fill. So we put it in the ones position for fill. And there we go, there is our tree. So. Before we move on to the search method, uh, I'm sure you're wondering why there isn't a remove method. Well, suppose we try to remove dill. Removing dill would make us have to reintroduce krill to the tree, which seems really easy, but imagine a cascade of children under dill whose children also have children. We would have to reintroduce all of those children and beyond back into the tree. Instead, it's, uh, more, it's more of a time saver to leave a flag on a node, so we'd leave a flag on dill, uh, to tell the computer to skip it if it ever encounters this node while traversing. Uh, typically, there is no real reason to uh, remove anything within the data structure once added. It's very rare to actually have to remove something. All right, here we are at search. Search will accept a node and perform a fuzzy search on it with the input of a max distance for the margin of error. After discussing all of the previous methods, this one should be fairly easy to explain. Search will call node search on root and recurse down the tree until it reaches a null node just like add. The only difference is that when recursing down the tree, we'll check the distance from our search node to the parent node and see if that falls within the max distance. If it does, we just add it to the string list. Once we reach that null node, we return the entire string list. All right, now that we can make our own BK tree, let's talk about practical application. I know I typically use the term misspelled word to denote the word uh, we were searching for, but BK trees can search uh, through more than just dictionaries. This data structure is made to be compatible with any tree of strings. Uh, this could be used to read sequences in genetics, sequences in chemistry, sequences in statistical analysis, and many other things. BK trees were one of the predecessor fuzzy searches and are often used as a base metric for now modern fuzzy searches. Nevertheless, modernized fuzzy searches are a recent development, and the amount of time that BK trees uh, stayed as number one uh, just goes to show how ahead of its time the algorithm was as a whole. The BK tree, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated data structures. Well, that concludes my analysis of the BK tree. Uh, today we learned about Levenstein distancing, the BK tree invariant, and operations of the BK tree. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope I was able to help you learn a little more about the underrated data structure that is the BK tree.